Hello, Richard from BudgetGuitarist.com, the website and the YouTube channel, which you're watching. Thank you. Today, we're going to work on this Mim Telly. And basically, we're just going to do a setup on this guitar. So we're going to take the strings off. We're going to clean it. We're going to put new strings on. We're going to adjust action, intonation, pickup height. We're going to look at the bridge that I use. We're going to talk about why I'm using the, the bridge I'm using, why I replaced the stock individual saddles with what I replaced it with. Talk a little bit about the pickups. Okay, so you probably can't see it from over there, but this guitar is filthy. It is filthy. It's very dusty. And that's because I haven't dusted it. And uh, since the last time I dusted it was maybe never. I don't know. Anyway, the tools that you will need if you want to adjust a similar Fender Telecaster. Set of strings. Tuner, you're gonna need a tuner. String action ruler, I like the Baroque because I am Baroque and it's very cheap. Wire cutter, so wire cutter. You're gonna need a capo. You are going to need some kind of string winder. This guy here for like polishing. I've got one of these guys here, this is like a jeweler's, uh, you know, you put it up to your, your eye and you can examine the diamond and say, oh, this is a very nice cut. I can see this is the European cut. You can buy a set of these for like two bucks anywhere. I like to use something like this or an OptiVisor, which I'll also show you when I'm looking at these teeny tiny lines because I can't see worth a damn. Screwdriver that fits whatever your pickups use. One of these is the is the uh, the correct size to adjust the truss rod. I think it's this one actually. So I've got a truss rod wrench, Allen wrench, and then I've got another Allen wrench, hex key, to adjust the uh, the tailpiece. So that takes care of all the tools except for the little spray bottle thing, which I neglected to get before I hit record. So let's get started, shall we? Step one, off with the old strings. If you're new to working on guitars, you might be tempted to do this. Well, let me just uh, snap this string with the at full tension. If you do this, just like I'm doing it now, that string will break, whip up and hit you in the face, possibly hit you in the eye, possibly cause permanent vision impairment. And so um, this is really important work that I'm doing on this channel. See. I don't want that to happen to you. So don't do that. What you're going to do instead is detune all the strings first and then do it. So let's do that. How do you know which way to turn? Well, if you hit the note and then start turning, if the note goes down, that's the right way. So in this case, it is clockwise. One, two, three, this is four, five, and six. Beautiful. So now they're slack. Now I can cut the strings. Does it matter where you cut them? No. Not really. I would recommend don't cut them way down here because it's easier to get these out if there's a little bit left. Are we having fun yet? I am. I enjoy this stuff. It's, it's, uh, it's calming. It's a really good idea when you're doing this to like keep track of the strings so that you don't end up with like one of these teeny tiny strings on the floor that you step on and it goes into your foot. Like nobody wants that. These come off pretty quick. And they come off pretty quick because the way I put strings on, the way I choose to put them on, I don't tie a sailor's knot in my strings. I've never had a problem with string slippage. Okay, so that leaves me with these guys. Now, my strat, like most strats, have a string through the body sort of deal going on. So what I like to do is just kind of go on the back side of it and push it through. See that little guy popping out here? And see how I'm keeping all my strings piled together in one spot so I don't step on them like I said before. So I have something called compensated brass saddles. Did you hear that? If we lose power... Actually, if we lose power, my lights will go out, but the camera, which is an iPhone, will keep going. And uh, the recording outfit behind me, which is a laptop, will keep going. So if it gets really dark, then just have to roll with it. 
Roll with it, baby. Oh. I live near Tampa, which is the lightning capital of the United States. All right, so that's going to need to be thrown out. I'll put it back here for now. So now I'm going to do something extremely embarrassing. I'm going to give you a close-up of how badly this guitar needs to be cleaned. Yeah, look at that. Look how bad that is. So here's my ripped-up T-shirt. Basically, this is just dust. But you know what? Let me get that uh, guitar cleaning fluid. Okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit of this guitar polish cleaner. Just a little bit. It's like a stain over here. It doesn't want to go away. Ah, here we go. So if you're keeping score at home, this is step two, clean the guitar. I don't actually much care if my guitar is dirty or whatever, but there, there's definitely an advantage to not having it dusty. The reason you don't want it dusty is because dust gets down into the pots and the switch. And then what happens is you go to turn your volume knob or your tone knob or switch your switch and it goes like that. And then you have to deal with that. You have to get rid of the crackling sound. So if you dust periodically, which I obviously did not do here, then uh, you can avoid that. I'm not going to spend all day on this. Just uh, Okay, now I'll uh, kind of wipe off the back of it. Okay, now if we have a look at the headstock area, usually a bunch of dust gets down in here because you don't have easy access when the strings are on. So when the strings are off, this is a good time to wipe away any dust down in here. So with that done, let's talk about these saddles. So on most guitars, or on many guitars, including the way this guitar shipped originally, you have individual saddles for each of the six strings. Sort of like this. Wow, this guy needs to be dusted too, doesn't it? Man, it's embarrassing, I guess. So this has got individual saddles. This actually, this has really good individual saddles. These are great. The ones that came with this guitar, this, this made in Mexico tele, were not that good. On the, uh, the saddles that came with the Telecaster, they felt kind of flimsy to me. And one of the things that I really noticed is they were nowhere near as thick and, and as well designed as these guys here are. They, they seemed a lot cheaper and they seemed a lot thinner. And with each of the two hex screws going down, it's almost like you're, you're making like a little table with two legs almost. And so what I've found personally was that my E string, if I kind of played it too hard, there was like a little bit of almost rocking that would happen with this little insubstantial saddle on, on the original Telecaster. And uh, any kind of movement in your bridge is going to hurt your sustain. You want something super solid. Like these are good, super solid. Les Paul, super solid, right? But what I discovered on the Tele is that there was, there was way too much wiggle room and so in order to make the high E more substantial, I thought about going with, uh, with these saddles. Now, the original Telecaster came with, uh, with brass barrels like this. So it's two strings per barrel, per brass barrel. But don't know if you can, I don't know how well you can see this in the camera, but on the original Tele, they were all cut at the exact same spot. Now, when you adjust intonation on a guitar, Normally, you want to adjust each of the individual strings because it's, it's going to be, you know, different for each string. So on a tele with uncompensated saddles, what happens is you might have the, 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 uh, the low E string and the low A string. You might have to, when you adjust the intonation, get a spot in between sort of both of them should be. So the idea for a compensated saddle is that the way they cut these notches at the factory, the, uh, the low E string notch will be a little bit further back than the low A string notch. And so the notches are cut in slightly different positions, and that gets you a heck of a lot closer to where you need to be in terms of intonation. So anyway, that's the point of these saddles. So compensated so I can get better intonation, but the mechanical connection, basically, the physical connection of this low E string, I've got, I've got the, uh, the B string, I've got the B string and the E string on the, same, on the same barrel, both pressing down, and this thing is super, super solid. 
So instead of that kind of plinky sounding high E string that I had before, now I've got a much better high E string. And then the other thing that you can do for that, if your high E is plinky, is of course switch to tens if you're playing nines. So between using a 10 and between using these, these uh, brass barrel compensated saddles, it's just, uh, it's, it's got the old school telly look, but using modern ideas. And uh, to me, this is just a really nice way to go. That doesn't mean that every Telecaster with uh, individual saddles has a plinky high E string. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is I did have that issue. And between switching to these and switching to tens from nines, totally got rid of the problem. So if you're having that issue, I'd recommend looking into it. If I can find the link to these brass compensated saddles, which are Goto, by the way, I'll put it Amazon affiliated link down there. So while we still have the strings off, let's talk about the pickups. The pickups that came with this were ceramic. They were meh. They're okay. I replaced them with Texas Special uh, Fender Custom Shop pickups. So these are hotter. They are, they're a little bit higher output than regular Tele pickups. And that is because the sound that I like is kind of that Stevie Ray slightly a little bit distorted sound. That's what I like. I have heard these pickups described before as being ice picky. And I think there's a reason for that. And I think the reason is if you've got like a tube amp, uh, you really have to buy pickups that work with that amp, right? Or even a solid state amp, I would guess. You know, any kind of amp is going to uh, accentuate certain frequencies and with these pickups, because they're hotter than normal pickups, some of those frequencies could, uh, could get accentuated too much. So Texas Special pickups may not be a good match for your amp, or they may be. It's just up to personal taste. Since I use uh, HX Stomp 99% of the time, it doesn't really matter to me. And since I'm not going for that clean Nashville sound, I'm going more the Stevie Ray route, these work for me. But I totally get it if people don't like these pickups. 